Hi, it's Steve. In this video, we'd like to show you how to replace the evaporator fan motor in your refrigerator. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to your refrigerator. So either pull it far enough forward that you can unplug it, or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuse. Once we've done that, we'll open up the freezer drawer, remove all of the items and store them safely somewhere, and then we can start the repair. Once we've removed all of the food from the freezer and disconnected the power, our next step will be to open the freezer completely. And it's easier to do this repair if we remove the door altogether. On this particular model, there are two screws on either side. We simply need to loosen those. We can lift the door off and then disassemble the freezer shelves. These are quarter inch hex head screws. We simply need to loosen them a few turns. Do the same on the opposite side. Now grasp that drawer front with both hands, lift it up and away from those mounting brackets and then we'll just set that aside. Now with the drawer front removed, we'll next need to lift out these two baskets and rather than try to separate the top from the bottom one, it's just as easy to push that top one out of the way. There are plastic mounting tabs on either side of that bottom basket. We simply need to release those. Let's take a flat blade screwdriver, gently pry out on them while lifting up. Do the same on the opposite side. And pull that top basket towards you, lift the whole assembly away from the freezer, and we'll set that aside. Now next we'll need to remove those mounting brackets and the track rod at the back. So first of all we need to release one end of that track rod. Let's take a large flat blade screwdriver, go in between the gear portion and the actual metal slide. And just pop that off. At this point you can slide that rod off the opposite end and we'll set that aside. Now we can remove the track and the bracket in one piece. To do so we'll need to go inside and remove a single screw. Now to remove those drawer glides in the bracket, the easiest way is to simply remove that single screw that secures that to the side wall. Again, that's a number two Phillips head screw. Next, we'll remove two screws on that support bracket at the front. These are quarter inch hex head screws. Then you can simply lift that assembly away from the sidewall and set it aside. Now we'll repeat the procedure for the opposite side. And we'll set that one aside. Now our next step is to remove the evaporator cover. If your model has an ice maker in place, you'll need to unplug that, disconnect it from the mounting screws and remove it. If you don't have an ice maker on yours, you will need to remove this cover to access the wire harness behind it. There's a quarter inch hex head screw that secures that cover to the evaporator cover. And once you tip that cover around, you'll see where the harness is attached to a little clip. We'll need to release that clip and pull it away from the harness and we'll set that aside. Now as well, you'll note that there is a ground wire attached to this metal tab on that evaporator cover. So you just take a flat blade screwdriver and carefully push that off. Now our next step will be to remove these screws across the top of that evaporator cover. These are all quarter inch hex head screws. Now next we'll need to remove this grill from the 
evaporator cover. And there are some tabs on the side that if they're tucked into the evaporator cover, you'll need a flat blade screwdriver to depress them and release them. And then we'll pull that grill down away from the ceiling and then we'll set that aside. Now next we'll need to grasp that evaporator cover and pull it towards us at the top. Just tilt it back. Once you have it pulled back far enough, we'll try to lift it up to disengage the lip at the bottom. And because we have a sensor mounted on the right hand side of that freezer wall, we'll want to tilt that evaporator cover to the left. Now, as we remove that evaporator cover, we now have access to the fan motor. It's located on this bracket. Now to replace the motor itself, we'll need to pull that harness through that bracket and disconnect the two mounting screws at the back so that we can pull that out and change out the motor. Now you may find it easier to remove the screws first, tilt that bracket down so that we can get at that harness. Again, these are quarter inch hex head screws. Now use caution when working near that evaporator. Those fins are quite sharp. Just rotate that motor. We'll disconnect the wire harness to the motor. Simply lift up on that tab. Separate the harness. We can also remove the rest of that wire harness from that bracket on the back side. And we also have a ground connector that we need to remove as well. We can lift that assembly out and change the motor. So our first step will be to remove the fan blade itself. We simply need to push that off of the motor shaft and just set that aside. Now next we'll need to remove the rear mounting bracket from the motor. There are tabs on either side. We simply need to compress those and pull that off the back of the motor. So you can use a pair of needle nose pliers. Simply compress those tabs and pull them through the, the back of that bracket. You can lift the old motor out. Be sure to remove the rubber bushing from the back and install it on the new motor. Fit the shaft through the bushing on the front. Line up the rear bushing. And then press that rear mounting bracket into the assembly. Now we're ready to reinstall the fan blade. Just make sure we have clearance, push it all the way down onto that motor shaft. And now we're ready to put that assembly back into the freezer. So we begin by placing that in upside down. And we're going to rope that harness back through that bracket. Be sure to reattach that ground wire. And when reconnecting the motor harness lead, make sure that the locking tab lines up and engages. We can now position that motor so that the screw holes line up. Secure it with the two quarter inch screws. And 
and we'll tuck that harness in behind there to keep it out of the way of the cover. Just carefully straighten any fins that you may have bent. And now we're ready to put the evaporator cover back in place. Now when placing that evaporator cover in, we want to make sure that we tilt it just slightly back. We want to try to angle it back enough that we can get the bottom edge of that cover in behind the raised portion of the liner. Now once we have it flush across the bottom, we'll leave it tilted back towards us so that we can reach carefully in behind and grasp that harness so we can feed that up through that opening and make sure we have that ground wire and we're going to carefully attach that ground wire to that metal tab. Now to properly attach that ground wire we need to have that inside of that opening and tucked in behind. Make sure it's firmly pressed onto that tab and tuck the rest of the harness into that opening and then we'll position the cover. We just tuck that harness connector into position, rotate it around, we'll insert the tab at the top into that slotted opening. There's another tab on the bottom that will hold it in place. You can reinstall the retaining screw. Now we can push the whole evaporator cover back into position. Just ensure that all the screw holes line up. We can then install the two outermost screws on either side. Now we can position that air grill, tuck it into the ceiling first, and then pivot it down into place. Position those two mounting tabs on the bottom, and then using the two longer mounting screws, we'll secure it at the top. And now we can begin to install the hardware for the drawer. And we'll begin by placing the assembly into position. We'll secure it with the two screws on the front first. We'll then extend that rail to expose the hole for the rear mounting screw. We can then close that one up. So just repeat the procedure for the opposite side. And again, extend the rail to expose the mounting hole for the rear screw. Now next we'll extend both rails, then we'll insert the left end of that rod into the left rail, again make sure both are pulled firmly to their stop, line up the gear on the right hand rail and snap it into place and just check the operation. Make sure when it closes both are flush and we'll fully extend it again and we're ready to put the baskets in place. Just pull that upper basket all the way forward. We're going to lower those into position. You can then push that upper basket towards the back. We'll line up the mounting tabs on the side, make sure that they snap into place. Make sure the front of that drawer is set down on that top track. If need be, fully extend it, push down and pull back 
so that it stops with this much of a gap. You can then push that forward and now we're ready to put the drawer front on. Now when reinstalling that drawer front we just need to make sure that the screws line up with the slotted openings on the end of those mounting brackets. We find it easier to do one side and then the other. Now with one side engaged switch to the opposite side that way you can maneuver that bracket so that you capture both top and bottom screws. Drop it down into place and then simply tighten them. Now once we have the screws secure, just check the operation of that drawer. We're now ready to load up the freezer, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.